excited about today's video. It's all about how to make your own personal paint palette. Now, you may have seen on previous uh, videos or posts that I've been building this one. Um, I think I started it in the winter, just this winter. Um, and I've got a couple of smaller ones as well. I wanted to tell you, um, it's my favorite now out of all the paint palettes that I, that I own. And over the years, I think the last 20 odd years or so, I've amassed quite a lot of paint, an embarrassing amount of paint. <laughs> but what I found with those tins of paints, those pre-made sets, is that there's always quite a few colors that I never ever use. They're always untouched. And I end up buying in uh, new little half pans to sort of slot down the middle. Um, and I thought when I saw somebody, I think it was on YouTube, I saw someone was making their own paint palettes. And I thought, that looks, that looks fun. And that also makes sense in the long run because it's going to work out more cost effective. Now, I will be honest with you, I have splurged on some of the best paint you can buy. I've bought Daniel Smith and Schmincker and Windsor and Newton and they're all artist grade paint. But don't let that put you off because you can still create a beautiful little palette using um, student grade paints and it can be a really, really affordable way to make a bespoke palette for yourself. So don't let that put you off. Um, I obviously have expensive taste. <laughs> but as you can see from this one, I've got a lovely, a lovely range of colours. Um, the darker ones, you can't really see them, can you, there in the tent? Let me grab this. I like to make these um, because it helps me to see what paint is what when I'm kind of sat creating an artwork. I look down and sometimes, especially all the dark colours, they tend to all look the same in the tin, but here you can sort of see how different they are. So I always make one of those as well. And I just use an ordinary little water, uh, watercolour sketchbook to put those in. So I'm going to set up at the desk now. I'm going to show you today how to make a mini watercolour palette and I will also drop a list of all the things I've bought to make them uh, so that you can go and get these things if you want to okay so I will give you links for those as well and I will show you my uh, secret technique to filling the little pans now when I say pans um, I mean I mean these little things here okay with the paint in them so I've got empty ones of those and I'm going to show you how to fill them so that um, what happened to me doesn't happen to you. When I first started doing it, I was putting the paint in and coming back and it had dried but the paint was only halfway of the pan and I couldn't figure out why it was doing that. And obviously then realised that, you know, the moisture was kind of evaporating out of the paint and it was sinking down. So there is a technique to this, okay? So I will show you in this video. Without further ado, let's get cracking and let's make our own paint palettes. Let's do this. So here are the materials we're gonna be using to make our paint palettes today. I've got these tiny mini magnets here. I've got six watercolor paints that I've chosen and they are from, uh, we've got Windsor & Newton, some Schmincke. Um, these are Quar watercolors by Golden and a Daniel Smith. Just below here we've got six empty half pans. These are cocktail sticks and you'll find out why we need those in just a moment. And this is the mini paint palette. Um, so that just opens like that. And you will easily fit six of these half pans inside there. So starting with the paints that I've chosen for the little palette I'm going to put together with you today. I've got Smolt de Monts Blue from Windsor & Newton. This is Indigo from uh, Schmincke. This is Gold Ochre from Windsor & Newton. This is Venetian Red, English Venetian Red, I beg your pardon, from Schmincke again. This is a neutral tint from Core, which is made by Golden and Shadow Violet by Daniel Smith. Obviously, the, there are several different brands here and these are what I had available in my box and I thought they'd make a really nice set. I'm also expecting them to make some nice colour blends, which we might investigate in another video at another time. So let's get our first half pan ready to fill. So the first thing you need to do is actually give the tube a little shake. It might sound like nothing's happening. It might feel like nothing's happening, but it just helps to disperse the pigments inside because what you sometimes find is 
when you take the lid off the watercolour, there's a sort of liquid accumulated towards the top, which leaches out. So we just want to make sure the paint is sort of mixed as well as it can be. We also need to be sure that we've squeezed up as much as we can from the bottom of the paint tube. Okay, so I'm just gently squeezing. And what we'll find when we take the lid off is it might sort of come out a bit. <laughs> But that's okay because we're aiming into here anyway. Now what I'm going to do is just literally fill this halfway, okay? So there we are. We have a, a slight explosion, but no stress, we're good. There's a, a reason why I'm holding a cocktail stick and why I'm doing that is I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to push the paint into the corners. So you just kind of want to almost mix it into the pan and get it into those corners tap out any air bubbles make sure all those spaces are filled okay and then what we're going to do is we're going to leave leave that to dry okay so it's slightly over half filled but that's not a problem as it dries the moisture from the paint because it's been in a tube will begin to evaporate and when we come back to this it will probably look a bit lower than it does now um, when it's fully dry, we, we top it up. So this it is a slightly time consuming process, um, but it is worth it. It's definitely worth it. I'm gonna go ahead now and fill up the other pans with the other paint colors. So I've just put the last paint in the last half pan and they now need to dry. Depending on where you are in the world and what your climate's like, um, it could take anything from about well, a few hours uh, to several days. And you'll know when your paints are dry because when they're wet they've got a nice glossy look to them and when they're dry they have more of a matte finish. And of course they may have dropped a little bit in the pan as well as some of the moisture evaporates. I'm hoping it won't take too long for them to dry today because it's really hot here and I think you know with the heat it will help them to dry out faster so we can get to the next stage of the video a little quicker than we perhaps usually would do. I also just wanted to share a quick tip as regards the little cocktail stick stirrers that I've used. Please be sure to use a clean one for every paint that you're mixing. You don't want what happened to me to happen to you where I inadvertently added a red to a yellow um, yeah, that was a bit of a disaster. So I always try and remember to swoosh mine round in my uh, water jar here and wipe them clean on a piece of kitchen towel or use completely clean cocktail sticks for each little pan. Whatever works for you, but please don't do what I did. <laughs> so I'm gonna leave these now to dry and then we will come back and add the next layer of paint to the uh, pans. And then the exciting bit um, is that we build our palette and we create a little colour chart for inside the lid here. So I'm going to make a coffee and come and check on these later. So a couple of days have elapsed since we filled the pans up with paint and they've dried beautifully. We've had stunning warm weather all weekend and they are really perfectly ready for the next layer of paint. I'm going to be topping those up and also making a little colour chart just to pop inside the lid of the tin palette so that when they're ready to use, I'll be able to easily identify all the colors that are in there. Because some of the dark ones, I think I mentioned earlier in the video, they can be really, really similar and hard to differentiate between. So that's what we're gonna do next. So I'm now going to fill up these half pans, which I think as you can see here, they have settled down and dried out really, really well. So we've got plenty of room to add some more paint. If you find um, that yours does this, I, can you see where it's sort of shrunk away from the edge of the pan a little bit? Please don't worry because when we come to add the second layer, you can just use your cocktail stick to manipulate the pane into the gaps. It's only shrunk away from the edges as the moisture has evaporated out of the pane. I also wanted to mention as well, if you're using really similar colors, um, like I've got this neutral tint here and indigo and in the pan they look almost identical so I would advise you to either write the name on the pan of the paint that you're using or keep the tube very close by to it so that you know which one you're going to put your second layer into you don't want to be getting them mixed up at this stage okay 
So adding the second layer of paint is pretty much the same way that we did the first. We just squeeze the paint in onto the first layer. Don't try not to overfill. We don't want to overfill it too much. You can always add a little extra in if you need to, but it's a bit harder to take out what you don't need and put it back in a tube. <laughs> and then just get your cocktail stick and manipulate the paint into the corners again and using the side of the cocktail stick you can almost kind of try and smooth or dab the top of the paint to give it a neater finish like that. So we're going to leave those half pans to dry out now and in the meantime we can be creating our colour swatch card. Now all I've done is measure um, inside this tin a, for a piece of card that's that's going to fit in like this and we'll attach that in later on. You also need to have a little think about um, how you want to lay your colours out inside the tin and then we can do a paint swatch of each colour onto this card. And all I'm going to do to create that is to take the lid off each tube and inside you will see a little dot of colour. I'm just going to get a wet watercolour brush and use that to pick up some of this paint and add a little colour swatch to this piece of watercolour paper here. So I'm starting with the English Venetian Red and I've just um, popped a little bit of water on the end of this brush. I'm going to dab it carefully in the lid, picking up a tiny bit of paint and just apply that colour. It may be quite, quite thick so add a little bit of water if you need to. We're going to have three of these colours on the top running across and three running across the bottom. So I've made my little colour swatch chart and I've just filled in the names using um, a fine liner pen in grey. This is a graphic line marker uh, by Derwent and they're really, really good. So I've just written the names underneath each little colour dot. I've decided on the order of colour, um, English Phoenician Red followed by Gold Ochre and Smalt Blue on the top and then on the bottom the dark one. So this uh, shade card is going to be really, really helpful when I come to use these. Uh, this one is indigo and this one is shadow violet in the middle and neutral tint on the far right. Now I actually ran out of shadow violet as I was filling up the second layer. So I've just um, cut the top off and it's a bit squashed now but I've tried to gouge out as much paint from the top of this as I can. So that's a good way to use up leftover paint as well. Now, you may be wondering what these are for on my right. These are mini magnets, although you've probably already guessed, I think. I'm just going to take one of these and they're, they're sticky on the back, okay, so they're self-adhesive. I'm going to turn over my little swatch card and then just to pop that in the middle like that and then just drop that into the lid like that. Isn't that nice? And in a minute, I'm going to very carefully put the paints in. These are going to have a magnet on the bottom of each one as well. And they're going to sit in the tin without moving around. That's the purpose of them. It's such a good idea. Again, I think I had discovered this somewhere on YouTube. It might have been or Pinterest. And I thought that's excellent because I had made a little tin before and of course they're all jostling around in there and some of the paints were cracking and it just wasn't great. So this actually helps to keep them in place and keeps them safe if you're taking them out on your travels with you as well.
Well, I hope you've enjoyed the paint palette tutorial and I really hope that you will give this a go yourself. Let me know if you do and please send me pictures of your palettes. I'd love to see them. If you've got any questions about any of the materials that I've used in today's video, just give me a shout or drop a comment below or send me a message. As you know, I'm always happy to answer any of your questions here and we'll get back to you as soon as I can. Thanks so much for watching. Thanks for being a part of this community. It is amazing to have you here and thank you for your support. See you soon.